Nightmare on Elm Street series. I've even put on my striped shirt. I know it's not the right colors, but it was all I could find. Before I get into talking about the movies, I want to make a shout out to the Michael Myers fanatic. He's reviewed the Child's Play series, you know, with Chucky the Killing Doll, the Wishmaster series with the Jinn, and of course, the Halloween series. So be sure to go check out his channel right here. Now, right before each of the films, I am going to give a spoiler-free review of the film before I get into my thoughts on it, which is going to contain spoilers. But the majority of this is intended for people who have watched at least the first of the films. I'm going to go through them chronologically. I'm not going to spoil the seventh one while I'm still talking about the first one. Also, I have not yet watched the new one. I've only just watched the series, so maybe I will eventually watch the remake. I did watch Freddy vs. Jason, but it's been some years ago, and not only had I not watched a single other Freddy movie before that, the only Jason movie I had watched, and to this day, still the only one I've watched beyond Freddy vs. Jason, is Jason X. I also haven't read any of the comics or seen that show that apparently this is linked to according to IMDb, Equal Justice, I don't know. The version I have here is the Ultimate Collector's Edition 7-disc DVD set. And I'd recommend it to any fans. It's got all seven movies in good quality. Most of them have extras, like Jump to a Nightmare, the original trailer, the occasional music video. The seventh disc has about 32 and a half minutes of documentaries and interviews. It also contains this booklet that has plot summaries, note that they contain spoilers, of all seven movies. An introduction by Robert Shea, the producer, and a brief introductory text by Robert England himself. Starting with Nightmare on Elm Street. If you haven't really seen any of Wes Craven's old stuff, like if you've only seen the Scream trilogy, you might not already know that he can really craft a very effective horror movie. Granted, the first Scream movie is that to an extent, and then, and then the series went gradually downhill as it went along. But Scream is also part parody of slashers. A Nightmare on Elm Street is pure slasher. It is a very, very scary movie. This is because of the atmosphere, the build-up, and the immensely eerie score. Kruger is very gradually built up over the course of the film. And it's also worth noting that in the first one, he really doesn't do that much verbal taunting. He doesn't have a lot of one-liners. That came later. He's a mysterious, sadistic figure. He's also a quite original monster. He isn't flesh and blood, so you can't shoot him or stab him. He isn't really a ghost. He's something else. And the concept is also where this one really gets you. This is a killer that strikes at his victims in their sleep. And it's not like he approaches them when they're in bed, either. He gets... he's in their dreams, in their nightmares. Everybody's had a nightmare and you're like, you know, relieved that you woke up. You know, it was just a dream, you didn't die, you didn't get terribly hurt. Only when Freddy comes at you, it does hurt, it does kill you. When it comes to Freddy Krueger, if you die in your sleep, you will actually die. The film is actually low budget and it hides this remarkably well. It isn't trying to do anything beyond its scope. Nothing feels like, oh, if only they had a couple of thousand dollars extra, it'll look great. The acting varies, and perhaps Langenkamp, if that's how you pronounce it, isn't always entirely stellar. But she's always cute and charming, and the acting is always good enough. This is Johnny Depp's debut, and he does pretty well. What the film also does that again sets it apart from a lot of other horror is that it truly evokes the feeling of being in a nightmare. There are several unforgettable sequences in this that looks just like something out of your worst nightmare. The characters are well written and nicely developed. <coughs> you get to care about them. Their relationships with one another are quite credible. The effects are surprisingly good. The makeup, the blood and gore, all of it rather convincing. 
And this has some very creative nightmare gags, too. And the characters are quite likable and not at all obnoxious, as is the case with a lot of other 80s horror. This has a lot of surprises. We're led to believe that we know what's going to happen, and then something comes completely out of left field. The ending is very effective, though I understand it wasn't what Wes intended the ending to be. Part of what makes Freddy effective is also relatively sparse but quite effective use of disgusting and sexually suggestive content. We quite frankly find him repulsive. He is a genuinely effective monster. We're not cheering for him, we're not hoping that these kids will die. Again, like with a lot of horror, especially slasher, of the 80s, we're cheering for them, we're hoping that they survive. If the concept at all appeals to you, I say watch it right away. Okay, now I'm going to get into the spoilers, so if you haven't already watched the movie or you don't want to know what happens in it, be gone! Okay, I love Freddy, especially in this first movie. But has anybody else noticed how emo he is? He keeps cutting himself. If only I'd have moved faster, and I hadn't been hit by that lamp. As much as I hate to admit it, this is technically where the whole idea of s skills and is introduced, even if it's only vaguely touched upon. It is a little annoying how the mother keeps not believing Nancy when she's telling her about Kruger, but I guess saying that you're being killed by your dreams usually does get you a one-way ticket to the nut house, all expenses paid, including the straight jacket. Glenn, I think I know who he is. Who? The milkman. I mean, the killer. And I think he might be coming for you next. Me? Why would anyone want to kill me? I mean, I can think of reasons for doing you in, but why me? The bit with Nancy in the bathtub and then the hand comes up between her legs, that was really good. It's such a vulnerable position. And it also has this suggestion of something sexual, like he's almost leaning towards being a rapist. Which I think was actually originally part of the idea of the character that in addition to being a child killer, he'd be a child rapist. But I understand they changed that because they didn't want people to think that they were capitalizing on a real case. The backstory of the parents having killed Kruger and then him coming back to exact on their offspring is really, really good. And the retelling of it is very effective. I love the way the film uses the idea that it's dangerous to fall asleep. This is also one of those cases where the original has the killer be much more effective. In this movie, when Freddy tries to attack someone, he fucking kills them. The only one who survives, the only one who survives maybe more than a single one of the nightmares is Nancy. And the nightmares that the others survive, we don't actually see. The low body count and the way this spends so much time building up these characters means that we always care when someone dies. I did think it was a little strange that the father believed her, or sort of did. I mean, he agreed to come back in 20 minutes. Freddy is less effective near the end. At first I thought that was because it was, you know, the real world and he maybe has less power there. But then that sort of turns out to be a dream. So after Nancy pulls a home alone on Freddy and seemingly defeats him, I will admit it was maybe a little low-key to have her just turn her back on him. I mean, I get the concept. If you don't believe in it, it can't hurt you. He gets his power from people being a f But then the car turns out to be Freddy, and Freddy pulls the mother in through the door. That was really cool and unexpected. Apparently Wes Craven didn't want that ending. It was the studio's decision because they wanted sequels, and Craven didn't like the idea that the most brutal or the most powerful would win. I like the feminism of Nancy fighting back at the end by herself without anybody else's help. 